Women of Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in pop culture. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Z Way And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, Yay. everyone. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk about the highs and lows of 420, films that have not stood the test of time, and why a bagel sandwich had actor Shay Mitchell running to the dentist. Plus, TV host and explorer Philippe Cousteau Jr. joins the table to talk about the Earth Echo Water Challenge. But first, guys, the rise of online shopping has led to an increase in returns. But now more retailers are tightening their policies, making it harder for you to get a refund. Here to talk about the latest trend is the host of In Case You Missed It by HuffPost, Heather Gardner. Hey, guys. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Monday. I did watch Game of Thrones. I'm sorry I'm not here to talk about that today. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you Sansa? <laughs> you know what? I'm trying. I'm trying. Well, let's just say Arya can enough. get it. <laughs> <laughs> get a growth moment last night. We were all excited. Woo. There was a lot of really good there feminist moments. Of, you know, we can yes. talk about this all day. But yes. online shopping. Yeah, let's get that. online shopping obviously yeah. is something we all do. Yes. I actually do it less because of the returning. Oh, but really? this is sort of turning into a problem for retailers, right? Yeah. So actually, this has been a trend that's been going on for several years now. But it's made news because ASOS.com, which happens to be one of the biggest online retailers yes. for clothing and fashion, specifically, got these earrings from there just last week. <laughs> wow. Um, but they actually sent a letter to their customers saying that they were exactly what you said, tightening the the return policy, making it harder for you to get a refund. Yeah. So what? Uh, what does tightening mean? So they had notoriously one of the most relaxed mm -hmm. um, systems when it came to getting your refund. Mm -hmm. Free shipping, free returns. They send you a nice prepaid label. The package was so easy to return. Just drop it in the mail. Really no hassle here, but, but now they're making it a hassle. So what they're doing now is instead of giving you a full refund after 28 days, you're going to get a store credit. And after 45 store days, credit. yes, store mm -hmm. credit. But after 45 days, you're just going to forfeit it. And basically this whole time it had been Return your items, get your refund, no questions asked. Yeah. Now they're asking questions. Yeah, 45 <laughs> days is sort of a long time, though. You should know. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Something Some people don't know. I recently, <laughs> like, actually not so recently, like, five months ago, bought a pair of shoes from ASOS. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'll return this. It's so easy. And I never did. And I tried to gift the shoes to my <gasps> oh. sister, and it didn't work out. And then I tried to come back to ASOS, like, can I do this, like, five months later? And they're like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so now I only shop online from stores that I can return in person. Five months right. later? Five months later. That, that's actually very, very relaxed. Yeah. No. yeah. But ASOS is, like I said, one of the biggest online retailers. They have 850 different brands that they sell on their online stores. And that's one of the reasons that I even started online shopping was because there was no risk. There was no risk to this right. at all. Um, but the reasons that they're citing, that they sent to the, um, all of their customers, was environmental reasons mm -hmm. and, of course, money loss. Yeah. I never thought about the environmental reasons either. It never dawned on me that the clothes that I was sending back might end up in a landfill. But unfortunately, according to Mashable, right. four billion pounds of clothes that are brand new, never worn, just end up in a landfill. Well, it never gets the resold. Boxes That's and yep. then the trucks. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the plastic. I mean, yeah. So yeah. and I just I don't know why I didn't think about that. I try to like I try to be that millennial that's very conscious right. about that kind of stuff. But it <laughs> never, never <laughs> dawned on me. I actually felt very, very bad when I was yeah. reading all this information. Like, what have I been doing this whole time? Yeah. I've been shopping at ASOS for years. I Do also want the location of that landfill because I would go <laughs> to that landfill and be like, clothing for everyone. <laughs> like, this is not the Buffalo it? Exchange. No, it's in the yeah. middle it's of like... the Atlantic <laughs> and it's covered in lard. Oh, oh no, so... that's so awful. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that this will affect how much people shop at ASOS. I do, I do, and it made me rethink of some things too. I'm actually not like you who like waits five months. I'm like, right away, She's try it on, <laughs> stick it back. That was a drag. Don't come yeah, yeah, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. 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 for Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm one of those shoppers that will try it on, I will make an immediate decision, put it right back in the bag and send it. But I mean, if I was one of those people who just kind of like to mull over things, and a lot of us do, I would definitely rethink shopping there because it's just not so easy anymore. I might just yeah. have to go to the mall, which I hate doing. ASOS makes it so easy. You know, a lot of online retailers make Where's it easy. Where is there a mall you speak of? I exactly, exactly. Yeah. I haven't been to one in a in long time. Right? Yeah. I think it's a connection. You've been to one in LA. Oh, yeah. mall. Uh, I, yes. Truthfully, I have not stepped foot in a mall to buy clothing in so long. It aggravates no. me so much because yeah. I just want what I want. I want the price that I want. I want it immediately. I want to sit and watch Gilmore Girls or Game of Thrones and buy... Well, maybe not during Game of Thrones. I pay attention. But, you know, I want to buy I want to buy things from the comfort of my home. But right. it is making me rethink it because, bottom line, I'm not going to pay more money. No. Right. no. Do you think this is contributing to the fashion industry? It's like, what, they have an $18 billion loss a year. Do you think oh this gosh. is contributing to yeah, that? Yeah, see, and this is the funny thing, too. We've talked about, you know, companies who try to be woke. And yeah. as much as ASOS wants to say that this was for saving the environment, 
bottom line. They all want their money. money. And, you know, yeah. if clothes don't get sold and end up in landfills, that hurts their bottom line. Yeah. What you said, $18.4 billion. That right. was in the Vox article. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely this is one of the reasons. And I also uh, starting to ban customers, too, mm. from fraud, which is another reason that the, the revenue loss is so high. I have a friend who's been banned from Reformation. Oh my God, really? Because she was returning so much and they're like, honestly, ma'am, you're not worth our business. Right. Wow, and they, I've actually- And she's not allowed to order anymore. Wow, that was she crazy. wearing them? Was, no, but she was just had so many returns. They're like, it's not cost effective for us. Yeah, right. wow. As a customer. Yeah, and a lot of, I mean, ASO <laughs> said that they're going to start banning people. That was a backlash too. Reaction on Twitter was, people immediately saying that they've been banned for buying a lot of things. And I, yeah. I am one of those people who will buy like a few different sizes of things, knowing that I'm going to return them, knowing how easy it is. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of turn my bedroom into a, a personal right. personal uh, fitting room, but yeah. So I won't do that anymore. Well guys, it's just another reason not to shop online. <laughs> Heather, thank you for joining us. No problem, thanks guys. And you can catch In Case You Missed It by HuffPost on HuffPost.com and Yahoo's Roku channel. Well, the highlight of most people's weekend was the celebration of 420. Yeah. Netflix also released a documentary called The Grass is Greener, exploring America's relationship with cannabis. Let's dive in. Does anybody what? else high? <laughs> Did she get yeah, high right now. <laughs> I am. High on life. <laughs> no. Woo! Yeah. I will never forget where my high school had a whole like, um, meeting with my grade teacher about natural highs. We were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Anybody got some weed? Natural <laughs> highs. In fourth grade, that's troubling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was one of those awesome people who could come to work high. I'm just like a completely, Never. I would just be on this couch just <laughs> Like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you guys did you guys did you guys celebrate the holiday? Yes, of course I celebrated 420, and I started watching pretty much every Avengers film. Oh really? <laughs> I watched like Ant Man and Ant Man. I watched all of them, you guys. I did it all. All the Ant Man. It was so amazing. That's an amazing marathon. Two Ant Mans, <laughs> Avenger films, uh, Doctor Time, dude. Like I was everywhere. Does yeah. smoking make those characters come to life even more? Is the action yeah. just that much more intense? Actually, the whole time I was watching the movie, like. I was watching with a friend and they were like, can you shut up? Because I was like, oh, he's so hot. <laughs> like I was definitely high distracted. and horny because every time Thor came on, I was like, oh! <laughs> was like, was it. it was just like, man, Thor is hot, Ant-Man's hot. Like all the heroes are hot. Yeah. I didn't know that weed was an aphrodisiac, but I'm here for that. Oh, totally. yeah. yeah like, oh yeah, there's a, there's weed lube for your veg. Uh, and it gets your vagina just as high as your mind. Yeah, I want, I want to get my That's vagina so blood. high it talks to I actually yeah. sell <laughs> my own lube. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, really? Are you hiding it behind Yes, darling. <laughs> just you promote it. Who wants the past mirror? <laughs> about this weekend was explaining the culture of weed here to a family member who was visiting and that it really is like high maintenance that you can just like text a number and have it delivered to your house and they yeah. thought that was phenomenal and I realized how special New York really is because it makes it so easy to get weed. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part. It's well, not as fun as LA though. I have seen a grown ass man in New York hide weed in a sneaker and I was like, what are you doing? And he was right. like, in case the cops come by. And I was like, okay, calm down. Yeah, LA it is way more free because it is well, legal there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's decriminalized here. So you, you it, walk well, down the street, well, everybody's way. smoking a joint and the cops do not care. Right. Kind of. well, well, you I'm, think it'll be legalized in New York? I think so. I think Cuomo has actually said that yeah. he's, he's, trying to, he's trying to go for them, mostly for the money reasons. I yeah. mean, you know, the, the what is it? It's um, DC and 10 other states of free um it's recreational there and they're making bank especially in colorado, colorado and every single almost every single democratic presidential candidate supports the decriminalization of, of marijuana on the federal totally. level yeah, so yeah. it is it is the issue that look at canada they just legalize it and they're expecting that next year that's going to bring yeah. in six billion dollars think about how shitty our schools are and how much that money right. could help them and think it's of all like, the joints yeah. well, it's amazing well that's yeah. what this ho this holiday has become so interesting because so it's actually so like you know it's like in the 70s it was a protest of the war and, and smoking pot in general naturally becoming like a movement of this is like now the next issue a policy issue we're going to debate as a country of uh, the recreational use of marijuana so that's what it, the 420 is really more than just a day to get high yeah do you have any to that point i actually saw this year more like woke blazing than ever before like mm -hmm. everyone who was like celebrating outwardly 420 was like making sure to talk about how like totally. you know 99% of the companies, the cannabis companies are owned by white people. Yeah. Let's not forget yeah. all the people who are incarcerated who are mostly people of color. Mm -hmm. Like we need to fix these laws and make it actually equal and free for everyone. Well, that's a big part of it. It's not yeah. only is legalizing, but as well as going back and wiping the record for the federal records clean of exactly. those people who are Which arrested. Is, yeah. Mostly people of color, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but and yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's cool that like in high maintenance exists and shows, and it's like I I, I just I never would imagine like how it's so it's becoming so common and so like 
Yeah. It's I'm about totally shocked. Time. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally shocked that in our lifetime, it's that used to be the stigmatized thing where yeah. if you smoke weed, you were a bad person. Oh yeah. And now it's not the case, but it's definitely true. Like we need to get people out of jail for the same crimes that people are making money, making billions of dollars off Absolutely. of. Yeah. And then yeah, the health well. benefits. I think we're just starting mm -hmm. to become a little more aware of them and how people don't necessarily need to be on pharmaceuticals. That there's a lot of like CBD and THC products that can help that are yeah. more natural. Does CBD work? I think it does. Ooh. Yeah, I use CBD on um, like my hip, and it does help with pain. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. You know something I just realized when you were talking about high maintenance is uh, Ben Sinclair like deactivated his Instagram this weekend. Oh, what? oh. And I don't know why. I wonder if he was just like maybe getting he gets way the, too lit. Yeah, I mean, maybe <laughs> he gets like, oh, like overload of people messaging yeah. like, hey, dude, I'm high. Like, <laughs> like, it's, and, like he's, I, I mean, I, I don't smoke enough. I feel like I don't. I don't. I'm just not a big smoker. But when I have gotten high, when I had my first edible, wow. Fun time. Did it change yeah. What's your best edible story? Oh, I just. <laughs> <laughs> He's high right now. The edible just um, kicked in. My, oh god, it's a whole, it's a whole story. It, it, basically, my friend was shooting a BB gun at my friend's car because okay. he, he likes the sound. That's and a weird turn. He shot it. The window shatters. He goes, "I'll pay for that." <laughs> I jumped out of my chair and started bouncing off the ground. I was so like high and <laughs> loving life, but I was. It was so funny. Are you sure that wasn't crystal meth? Yeah. <laughs> looking that back at like it, Molly. looking back, my teeth have been falling out a lot. Uh, oh man. Wait, I'm oh, bleeding. Wait, wait, did you guys? Am I a meth addict? <laughs> For to help you get off meth, have you seen the Secret Life of Pets? They have a new trailer. Oh yes. <laughs> and you know, I, we definitely have a clip of it, and we're dying to show you guys. <laughs> Chloe, why is there a lampshade on your head? My owner might have given me a little bit of catnip. <laughs> Everything is great. All right. I wonder what sounds I could make. Are you finished? The Secret Life of Pets 2, rated PG. That was weird. Oh, sister, it's going to get way weirder. In theaters June 7th. <laughs> Woo! That looks yeah. cute. That yeah. looks awesome. Feed for what animals. Do you, think? do you have pets at home? Do you think they're blazing? No, I do not have pets. But if I did have pets, they'd be high all the time. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peter's like, like I'm catnip. <laughs> 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 yeah, I love catnip. My cat gets really high on it. Um, I wish I could partake. Um, yeah. yeah. You could eat catnip. Yeah, you just don't get high off of it. No. Yeah. It tastes kind of salty though. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's like, pretty don't good. Eat catnip. <laughs> we'll eat it some some later, right? Well, tune in for tomorrow when we eat catnip. Uh, on that note, a film <laughs> that's good today may not be so great tomorrow. That's why Insider recently broke down flicks that were once regarded as groundbreaking classics and after years have been rendered nearly unwatchable for a variety of reasons. Um, this piece on Insider is kind of interesting because it really makes you think about some of these really classic movies yeah. that we loved or that were so successful that when you look through now the 2019 lens are quite problematic. Well, and oftentimes it's about race and how they handle uh, race. And very it's often. Yeah. Off, like Indiana Jones, when you look at the Indian characters and that and they're eating monkey brains and you're like, no, yeah. we yeah. thought this was okay and why did we support it? But it's just like we move the dial so much in the more positive direction about mm -hmm. representation that that's what makes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about Tropic Thunder. Oh, oh my God. Yes. That movie was, whoa, a lot. Robert Downey Jr.'s yeah. in blackface. It's uh, actually wild. <laughs> I just, black body. I <laughs> just was having a conversation with someone. I'm blanking, but it was a white person. They, someone brought up for some reason, and they're like, was that a big deal? I'm like, yeah, yeah. it was that. It was and they deal. kept pushing back. It was like, but it was funny. He was like portraying how stupid it was. I was like, no. It was right. bad. It was Wait, bad. Was it Fallon him. playing? He, who did he play on uh, SNL where he was fully blackface also? Oh, was it Chris oh, Rock? I do not that. remember that. Yeah, that one. there's so many like uh, comedians who've done like full blackface yeah. and gotten away with but, it. Yeah. And this list also points out some films like um, that we are regarded in such high esteem, like Breakfast, Breakfast at Tiffany's, which yeah. I actually want to admit I had not seen. Oh, I have not. Seen I have, them. and it's a I was born in like great movie, yeah. and I love it. But then Mickey Rooney is playing her Asian neighbor, yeah. and he has these fake teeth in and a really thick accent. And again, you watch it. And you're like, oh, this would have been a great iconic movie had they not done right. that. Damn, yeah. that's a tragedy. Yeah. yeah, it is. But that was super common. They would never think to hire an actor who was actually no. Asian. They would just literally, and this is like a nightmare, tape people's eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're like, do you not get? Like, did they not once when they were in the makeup room think like maybe we shouldn't do this? No. no. There's so many actors out there who no. are dying for jobs. Mm -hmm.
But also Mickey Rooney doesn't think that that was bad. Right. No, he went out and said <laughs> that everywhere he goes, people congratulate him and like really? he has Asian fans who are like, that was great. You're yeah. wild, man. And I'm like, Ooh. do you know sarcasm? Like they're probably just being like, fuck you. Oh, yeah. it's a gang of teens bullying him. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, like looking back in my life, the one movie that I do really love but is considered kind of problematic is The Help. Oh, and yeah. Help. You love the help. I did. I did. When I first saw it, I did. I did love it. I just, I mean, I, Viola Davis is so spectacular. I mean, it, I love her. It had a moment. I love her. Emma, her. Emma Stone's even good at it. It's like, and Allison Janney's in it, like, and, and it's such a well acted movie yeah. and well written. But then, of course, growing up and learning, like, oh, okay, it's written by Tate Taylor, who's a great writer, but he's a white man. And it's mostly a coming of age story about a white woman who's mm -hmm. now, like, helping these maids. And it doesn't really, it's like, about it's a white savior story. The white savior story about civil rights doesn't really talk or really what was really happening about yeah. the civil rights. So it's one of those movies where like it's really well done. But looking back and watching now, I mean, of course I love it when she's like eat, says eat my shit or whatever. <laughs> like it's funny, but like the <laughs> movie is problematic. But you even yeah. have Viola coming yes, back now she said and being it. like, yeah, okay, maybe I would have approached it differently now. Right. Or, but at the time, it did have a moment and it was telling a story. It's just looking back, maybe we could have like amplified the black narrative a little more yeah. over Emma's. I think just like the movie Green Book, it ended racism. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> we saw it and we conquered it's it over. in nine minutes. And we won the Oscar, so there. Yeah, and I'm so excited for Green Book 2, which is post-racial America. Yes, they're driving in Canada. Oh, yeah. because he, the first Green Book was yeah. actually driving Miss Davy. Yeah. It? What is it, Davy? Miss Daisy, yeah. Yeah, that Same was, movie. yeah, Spike Lee lost to that movie that year. Yes, for best 30 years That's later. That's why he, he got up and walked out when uh, Green Book <laughs> won. And then we've spoken about the, the New York Times <laughs> Daily has this terrific podcast that addresses this exact um, driving Miss Daisy to Green Book yeah. and the nature of, the, of driving and race, racism and white writers making these movies. And it's very interesting. I, I recommend the listen. Yeah. You know another movie Ooh. that didn't age well? Garden State? Guys, in college, I loved Garden State. I thought it was so good, and the soundtrack at the shins, and you were like, feeling feelings, and then I watched it not that long ago. I was like, this movie is garbage. Really? So, like, Natalie Portman does that, like, that dream pixie kind of character that Ooh. is there to just, like, amplify his narrative and, like, build up his ego. Like, as far as, like, a female narrative, it is mm -hmm. so weak, and, like, we write female characters so much more complex now and nuanced, and she's just, like, this vehicle for his exploration, and you're just like, oh, God, it's a horrible movie. Like, trash. You just made me, like, sick to my stomach. <laughs> you just, like, really told us what was wrong with the past. Yeah. And I just want to say I am so grateful for us being able to make some progress, because, like, now shows are fucking dope. TV is yeah. so much Shows better. are dope. Yeah, seriously, things have gotten so much better. Like, I, I was, again, I just watched the finale of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and I was, like, blown away. And I was like, if this show existed when I was a teenager, totally. It did. It was been... called Sabrina the Teenage Witch. No, that was a whole nother That's show. a whole different yeah, vehicle. Yeah, no, don't get me started on the remake. differences. No, it's called Completely different. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> this yeah. is like seriously. You are really yelling at me because I'm angry. She'll start muttering satanic songs. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. But the chilling adventures of Sabrina seriously is like a, I feel like a feminist manifesto. Right. It's yeah. So good. Really? Yeah. It really is. Damn. I'm really? empowered by that you gotta idea. Gotta get into it. It's okay. so good. I watched Real Housewives. Oh. Like yeah. Did so you watch last night? No, I did not. I watched Game of Thrones instead. I watched both. <laughs> I feel like the Real Housewives age as well, but the women on it don't. <laughs> oh, moving on. Black. Wow. Whoa, who are you talking message. about? <laughs> she is a message. Ouch. Pretty little liar star <laughs> Shay Mitchell's lunch turned disastrous after she broke one of her front teeth on a bagel sandwich. Mitchell posted a video on Instagram displaying her new toothless grin, but don't worry, her dentist was on hand to bring back her thousand watt smile. Oh. I just this being so sad. being betrayed by bagels like this. That is yeah. great. I'm I'm sorry. It just I can't even imagine. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, your friend. That a bagel would do this. I'm sorry. I, bread can be dangerous. Bread can be really dangerous. I've been into a piece of bread where that was really hard, and I'm like, what was that? A rock or something? <laughs> my dad broke a tooth on bread. Oh my god. So like, I just want to let people know, like, oh. not why safe. Are, why aren't we talking about this enough? Right. Yes, there not needs enough. to be more awareness for the bread. Phobic. Yeah, bagel awareness. The thing about a bagel is it's tricky because it looks soft. Oh, I can easily bite into this, but it's it's like biting into rubber sometimes. Can I be honest? And it will tear tear your teeth. 
Yeah. Um, this has never this has never been a problem for me. What bagels are you guys eating that are so <laughs> hard that you're breaking I your teeth? I just described it. It's the chewy yeah. hardness. No, but it's... don't you touch it first? Yeah. Oh, you oh feel I don't just like good bagel. You, you can feel touch my them. bagel. I don't belong. Who my goes bagels? like this to their bagel? <laughs> no, you, I, I, I have no, 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 no. about you. No, 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 no. No, you do not. Like Cookie Monster. No, you yes, do not. I do. Yeah, I get I it. Do you feel that like if it's like hard on the outside, smushy the inside, you get all excited. <laughs> what are you guys having? I just want bacon. Get on it and no, eat it. yeah, I, I squish butts, not bagels. Oh, <laughs> oh you're off, go off, go off, go off, uh, go off. Yeah. Um, I really want to shout out doc to Dr. Kevin Sands, that dentist. He's like a dentist to all the stars. Ooh. I love his work. I'm really? obsessed. Whenever what I work? like someone's teeth. Work. <laughs> what work? You guys, Those veneers. Are veneers. Veneers, yeah. people. Uh. If you're looking into a Hollywood star's mouth, you're looking probably at Dr. Kevin Sands' work. Right. Wow. Well, look yeah. how perfect her teeth are. And also, you don't lose a tooth for a bagel That's unless it's a veneer because they fall yeah. down your teeth oh. and they put on those little. So Ooh, that that's another like thing. Weak, weak teeth is <laughs> <Weak laughs> really teeth. probably the problem behind this bagel, <laughs> well, this that's, bagel situation. Damn, that's why I get I drink a gallon of milk an hour. Oh, oh really? really? Yes, <laughs> to make sure my teeth are strong enough for bagel. <laughs> that's your secret. Ooh. <laughs> got milk? So you got your you got your vagina what your vagina lube? I have my vagina lube. I got my got milk, and then I have my friend. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> that is your brand. Oh my god, that's great. I, I really hope that you have a commercial for, for Milk Mouth. Okay, thank you. Can you bring back the Got Milk? Thank you. The Milk Mouth? Yeah. Yes, I no. go, oh no, milk is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so messy? <laughs> um, Gallon to the head. No. Speaking of teeth, did you guys know that America Ferrera's teeth are insured for $10 million? She's great really? teeth. Yeah, because she has an Aquafresh deal or whatever. $10 million. Ooh. So if she knocks out her teeth, she, <gasps> she gets paid. Damn. Wow. I That's respect insane. that and I love that. Yeah. She I love her, teeth. so congrats. Wow, well, um, I have shitty teeth, so I'm upset. Yeah, well, we've known about J-Lo's butt being insured for, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. again, makes sense, respect yeah. it, love it. What, what would, would you insure? insure? Oh, I was oh. about to ask you that, Jinx. Oh, okay, I would insure my mind. <laughs> 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 because a mind is the strongest thing you could have. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. Thank you for going to her TED Talk. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I am brave. <laughs> I'm with her. <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm with me and my brain. <laughs> what would you insure? Oh, my, uh, um, no, uh, uh, um, my luscious thin lips. <laughs> what would you insure? <laughs> I would insure my arms. Ooh, you do oh, have wow. Michelle Obama. Yeah, Michelle nice Obama arms. arms. You could like choke someone. Yeah. Yeah. I do often. Wow. <laughs> yeah. She's hey, good. welcome to brunch. Yeah, don't piss me off. I'm not Shannon. What should I insure? Oh, oh, wait, probably your abs. Your abs have really. Oh, yeah. They've really no, they're together. not there yet. No, Actually, I was pet. looking at your abs. Oh my, and I was I like, like, oh, yeah, your titties. Yeah, I like your titties. Yeah, I would do Dolly Part. Me and Dolly. Shout out Dolly. Yeah, aren't hers like, <laughs> what is it? Like 300,000. They're like three. Per boob though. Per yeah. boob. I yeah. could do like, what? I think 150 each, right? Thousand, right? Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. For sure. You just gotta always do. <laughs> Honestly, I would motorboat those all day. I know. Seriously. They're good. Such this a great is taking rag. a turn. It usually yeah. does. <laughs> it, it's like, you know, like 12:15. We're like, so when we're gonna fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Every day, Monday through Friday. Oh Every goodness. single day, we do ask ourselves that question. I think we're just not having enough sex. <laughs> we just gotta do. No, that. millennials are about sex. Millennials are not having sex. You guys yeah. read that piece, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm not having sex. Yeah. I'm not. And that's why you're here. Yeah. She said, I'm not. That's why she agreed to co host today. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I have nothing better to do. <laughs> you can just pick somebody out of the audience. Okay, yeah. who would like to be my partner? <laughs> Woo, oh, my oh, we got hands oh, in the I air. was not expecting All that. Years. <laughs> I regret that entirely. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, well, we work out the details of our, urge, our orgy later. Let's get to the most exciting thing. What better way to celebrate Earth Day than with today's guest? Philippe Cousteau Jr. is an Emmy nominated host, author, and explorer. Cousteau is also the founder of President of, and President of Earth Echo International, dedicated to inspiring youth to act now for a sustainable planet. Here to talk about the organization's water challenge is Philippe Cousteau Jr. Wow. Hi, everybody. We couldn't wait to get you out. We were playing that music early. We were like, get him out. 
Yeah. Hey, what an entree. I like the discussion. This yeah. Oh, really? Oh, really? Right really? Glad you like yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Go from sex to Earth Day. I think yeah. It's, yeah. Well, I think it's well, yeah. important. Yeah. Without sex, there'd be no humans to stay on Earth, and then Earth would probably get lonely, right? That's very true. <laughs> very true. Sense? Connecting the dots. That's yeah. science. That's great. I'm That's trying science. my best. Yes. <laughs> that is hashtag science. I am the yeah. science specialist at Bill Brown. She is. I know. A lot of people don't know. So please tell us about Earth Echo International. Well, you know, Earth Echo is is an organization that was inspired by my grandfather, who was Jacques Cousteau, who was a mm -hmm. filmmaker and explorer, and is really all about how do we help encourage and empower the youth movement? Because as we all know, you know, millennials, young people today, next gen, are really concerned about the environmental issues that are going on. We see it in the press all the time. Yeah. And the only way we're gonna change it is if we get young people engaged in solving the problems. Because every real social movement that's been successful has been driven by young people. That's mm -hmm. true. And can you tell us about some of the programs you have to help do that? So we have education programs in classrooms all over the world. We have our, our program, the Earth Echo Water Challenge, is probably one of the largest citizen science water quality programs in the world. We all know about the water crisis. Yeah. Millions and millions of people don't have access to clean water. And as we've seen even in this country, places like Flint, you know, got a lot of the headlines a few years ago. There's a lot of people that, that drink contaminated water and don't even know it in this country. Right. So the yeah. program's all about how do we engage and empower people to go into their communities, test the quality of their water, and understand what's going on. Right. And what are some of the ways you get local communities to take the time to test their, 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 their water? So, you know, we work a lot with school groups, after school groups, religious organizations. There's a lot of corporate partners uh, like Baxter and Xylem and others that get their employees as volunteers out. Um, we, we are in actually 146 countries. We've had people participate in this program, one and a half million people around the world. So um, it's, uh, you know, once you get people outdoors and engaged, it's terrific. It's yeah. magic. You see what happens. Do you find it harder? I think I know the answer to this question. To get adults or millennials <laughs> more like inspired to take up this this what, cause? You, say, you think? What do you think the answer? I think it's harder to get adults. You are one hundred percent correct. Our political climate. Yes. <laughs> well, there you go. We got. First of all, can we all, can we all just say we got to vote more? Yes. 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 Because yeah. young people care about these issues. Yes. Um, and, and, and we wouldn't be in the current political climate right. if more young people would vote. It's, and it's for the first time ever becoming a leading issue in the democratic process that it never has been before. That That's right. There's some candidates yeah. that are like, uh, just using climate change as yeah. like their Absolutely. platform. AOC, yeah. 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 Uh, so so no. I think you're absolutely right. Young people care. Mm -hmm. um, and they're engaged. They're just oftentimes looking for some encouragement, some tools, some suggestions of how they can get in to their communities. And so that's what we're really all about. Give them the tools and then get out of the way. Yeah. And I have some random question. I don't know if you saw today, uh, Lil Dicky released this like I Love Earth music video with like Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, the zebra. Have you seen it? I, you know what? I've been out of the country and I just got back last night. On but you've heard of it. I, I've heard of it. Um, Do you like the advisory board yeah. of the DiCaprio Foundation, which I know is involved in that. Right. So, uh, and Leo does terrific work with the environment. So I'm really excited about it. And I'm going to be uh, checking it out this afternoon. Do you sure. think pop culture movements like that actually do make a difference and help get people involved in movements such as yours? I do. I think it elevates kind of the issue for people because mm -hmm. it's a big issue. I mean, let's face it. We are facing some very real challenges when we come to oceans. We all hear about ocean plastic, fish mm -hmm. declining, our air quality, you know, water quality, climate change, all these things. Um, so we just the more momentum we can build, the better. Right. Yeah. And how did you get inspired to love nature and environment? I know your grandfather is a who huge influence in your life, but how did that manifest in Earth Echo? Well, you know, toward, specifically towards the end of his life. So my grandfather, for people that don't know, Jacques Cousteau, he co-invented scuba diving mm -hmm. 20, 75 years ago this year, actually. Um, he did a series of documentaries all over the world. It was the first time people had ever kind of seen the oceans. We all grew up with Nemo and uh, uh, Shamu and all this different stuff, right? Free Willy. But uh, yes. For him, when he was our Jaws, unfortunately. unfortunately yeah, Jaws. that was the strike against him. Yeah, that was <laughs> that's no, not one of my favorites. Respect the ocean not one of and my everything favorites. in it. <laughs> I like that. Positivity. Angry because of all the plastic or something. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, you know, he did a lot of documentaries because when he was little, nobody knew anything about the ocean, right? Um, so growing up with him, he really inspired me and taught me that young people are the key, as I said, to really any social movement. Um, young people are, are the ones that drive change. And how does Earth Echo honor their legacy? Well, it, everything we do is focus on that message that, you know, we have a simple vision that my grandfather and father both used to say a lot, which is every single child deserves the right to breathe clean air, to drink clean water, to walk on green, healthy soil under a blue sky. And that's kind of the vision that drives us forward, and it's, it's right out of uh, his mouth. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure you have to get a little creative with how to keep people interested. And you have this new virtual reality project called Drop in the Ocean. Yeah, so we do, actually the last time I did AOL Build, we do a lot of documentaries and programs. We were talking about a travel series that we did with the uh, Travel Channel mm -hmm. called Caribbean Pirate Treasure. We did two seasons of that with my wife, my wife and Ashlyn. 
And um, so we're always looking for new ways to reach people mm. with kind of technology. Virtual reality is really exciting. Drop in the Ocean premieres this Thursday at Tribeca Interactive. Awesome. Wow. Um, That's really cool. And what it does is, is using technology, it shrinks people down. It's a shared group experience. Mm -hmm. Shrinks people down to about an inch tall mm -hmm. equivalent. Puts you in the ocean so that plankton and all this stuff we take for granted, it's really small and we don't really know what it is and it's kind of out there in the ocean. Right. Uh, all of a sudden is really big. Wow. And, um, this is an image at the end. It closes with a whale shark that eat plankton, actually. They're filter yeah. feeders coming and swallowing you up. But uh, <laughs> it's just a way to change the perspective for people to understand the oceans because yeah. the oceans still are getting uh, kind of short change. And to respect the ecosystem and how even the smallest thing has the biggest impact and has to be taken care of. Well, yeah. So, uh, the circle of life. Yeah. Two out of three breaths Lot that we take. <laughs> Every single moment uh, of our lives comes from the ocean. Yeah. Right? So it yeah. uh, comes from plankton in the ocean. It doesn't come from trees. It doesn't come from the Amazon. It comes from the ocean. So, yeah, circle life. Kind of important breathing, oxygen, all stuff we're all fans of. Kind of need a healthy ocean to do that. And for our watchers, we always like to leave them feeling empowered. So what is maybe one thing we could do today to help with water and making sure that things are accessible and clean? Be informed. You know, we all have an incredible amount of knowledge on our fingertips. I would say be informed and allow that information to help encourage you. As I said earlier, I'm gonna say it again, we're coming up on the election 2020 and not just federal, but local elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Vote, please vote, get engaged and vote on these issues. Please yeah. God vote. So please yes. God please. vote. Please, please. Yeah. please. please. Make well, it clap for democracy. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it, vote. <laughs> please, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. You can learn how to get involved with Earth Echo Water Challenge by visiting www.earthecho.org. And thank you to Z-Ray for co-hosting. Thanks for having me, guys. Yay! And that's all from us. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same table. Yay! Yeah.